Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into our video. In this video, we will look at building a simple model on an STM32 microcontroller directly from Plex. If you have trouble setting up the STM32 target support package or building a Plex model onto an STM32 target, please follow the links given in the description below to access the appropriate tutorial videos. Let's open Plex standalone. The demo models are located under Window Demo Models. Apart from the demo models included with Plex, the Plex target support packages include a separate set of demo models. I should mention that these are included with Plex block set as well. Let's open the demo model titled Simple Model from the STM32 target support demos. A brief description of the model and instructions on how to simulate it are provided here. Let's open the model. The model is split into three distinct subsystems. Notice that each subsystem has been enabled for code generation as indicated by the thick outer border of the subsystem blocks from the execution settings dialog box. Therefore, each of these subsystems can be independently deployed to the corresponding STM32 hardware. The subsystem labeled G474RE is configured for the Nucleo G474RE board. The subsystem labeled G431RB is configured for the Nucleo G431RB board. And similarly, the subsystem labeled F303RE is configured for the Nucleo F303RE board. Each of these subsystems use the target I.O. blocks from the STM32 target library. The subsystems include a simple model to blink an LED on the Nucleo board and to generate two sinusoidal waveforms that are measured with the PLEX scope. The MCU's pulse width modulator, or PWM peripheral, is configured by the PWM block. Duty cycle is provided as an input to this block. The timer unit, carrier type, carrier frequency, and blanking time parameters can be configured from the main tab of the PWM block parameters window. The PWM block can generate a single or a complementary PWM pair on up to three channels. Analog signals are generated by using the digital to analog or DAC peripheral device. Analog signals are sensed by configuring the analog to digital or ADC peripheral of the MCU, and digital signals are sensed by configuring the digital in peripheral. In this model, we generate PWM and analog outputs using the PWM and DAC blocks respectively. Then we connect these output pins to the appropriate input pins to bring these signals back to the model environment. Note that the target I.O. blocks of the STM32 target are functional in the simulation and include behavioral model of the component so that we can verify if the model and the peripherals are configured appropriately before testing on the hardware. Therefore, let's run the simulation in Plex first. We expect the digital in to capture the generated PWM waveform and the ADC to capture the sine waveform. Now let's look at the hardware connections. The pin numbers for all the peripherals are listed here. These pins need to be connected externally using jumper wires. Here I have a Nucleo G474RE board, so I connected the pins accordingly. Next, let's build the subsystem onto the desired Nucleo board. Connect the desired MCU to the host computer through a USB cable. In the Coder Options dialog, each subsystem is configured for the corresponding STM32 hardware and can be directly converted into target-specific code. The discretization step size of each of the subsystems is set to 100 microseconds. For advanced users who are familiar with STM32 Cube IDE, there is an option to generate code into an STM32 Cube IDE project and to then build and program from there. Follow the link in the description below for further details. In this video, we will build and program the MCU directly from Plex. Choose the desired programming interface from the drop-down menu. The default programming interface is OpenOCD. In this model, we have the external mode option enabled. The default communication link is set to JTAG, but you can choose to communicate over serial. Then, click Build. If programmed correctly, the LED on the Nucleo board should blink. Now let's connect to the external mode. Notice that communication over JTAG is configured via a local IP address. For further details, consult the STM32 target support manual. External mode means 
the plex schematic is synchronized with an external source. In this case, the Nucleo device. Once connected via the external mode, data from the microprocessor's signal buffers are visible in the plex scopes and display. The generated sine waveforms, as well as the captured PWM and ADC signals can be viewed on the plex scope in real time. Certain values on the target device can be changed in real time if the component is added to the exceptions list found in the parameter inlining tab of the Coda options window prior to building the model. In this case, the values labeled gain and duty can be changed on the fly when connected to the target device via the external mode. This concludes the video on building a simple demo model on an STM32 microcontroller directly from Plex. For more videos and further information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thanks for watching.